It's election week today on the spectrum, but before you head to the polling booth, you're going to hear from more than a dozen candidates running for Congress and for the state house one final time about what they want you to know about them. Plus, will it be four more years of President Trump or will former Vice President Joe Biden make it back to the White House? Our all-star roundtable breaks down the presidential race as well as some of the key races in the Senate and Supreme Court. From Studio B at NBC4 in Columbus, Ohio, this is NBC4's The Spectrum with Colleen Marshall. After months of rallies, weeks of debates, and plenty of political spin, we are now just 44 and a half hours away from the polls opening on Election Day. Good morning. Welcome to The Spectrum. I'm Colleen Marshall. Over the past few months, we've been talking with more than a dozen lawmakers and candidates hoping to fill seats in Congress or at the State House. And in each of those interviews, I've asked them all the same final question. What's one thing you want voters to know about you? Well, today we're letting you hear from each of them one final time before the election is decided starting with those congressional races. What's the one thing you want voters in the district to know about you as they make their decision? Well, I just, I want people to know, and I think people know a lot about me. I think I want them to know that I'm working hard for them and that I'll work for them um, in the future if they give me their vote and that I try to find compromise and, and get things done. I want everybody in this district to know that I care. Whether you're Republican, Independent, Democrat, Green Party, it doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is that we build an economy in these small towns, Circleville, Wilmington, Logan. We bring these small towns back so that way we can have a future in these towns. I'm from a place where I had to move to Columbus to guarantee a job. It should not be like that. Our young people should not have to move to big, big cities in order to have that uh, that opportunity. We can bring those small, the, that chance back to small towns, and that's what I'll do when I'm in Congress. That I am committed to fighting for them and with them and to helping them have the fullest potential of their lives. Um, and the reason I do that is because I, when I was born, um, my mom was on welfare. She left an abusive marriage. She wanted my brother and I to have a better life, um, free of violence. But to do that, she went on welfare. And when she was on welfare, she was able to get job training and she was able then to get off welfare. Um, but there was also the safety net, even without welfare, that helped us. Um, you know, I was on reduced and free school lunches at times. I was one of the first um, Head Start kids in Ohio. Those things, that safety net that allowed our family to be moved forward is um, that it, um, is, a, is an investment that the taxpayers of Ohio made in us as, as, uh, and my family. When I was a child, I get to pay back now. And I get to ensure, and I want to ensure that other families who are in similar circumstances, who have financial crises, and we're seeing it every day with COVID, have a champion there fighting for them. What's the one thing you want voters to know about you? I'm relentless. Um, I, I am, I, I don't stop. This is, I, I am so honored and blessed to be able to do this and I love it. I wake up every morning, I get home every night and, and think about how, you know, fortunate I am to be able to do this. And, and, I, and when you love something and when you get going and, and, and you move, you, you just, you can't stop. And um, that's the way I am about this and, and it's truly a blessing for me to be able to do it. I love this place. My story in District 12 starts when my grandmother got here in 1939 on a refugee ship. She was escaping the Holocaust. We've been here ever since. I had some time away in Athens and went to OU, but I'm a mom, I'm a business leader. I wanna move us forward faster. Above all, I wanna unite us. We need to be united right now. We cannot be divided and we have to choose our country over our party in this moment. We all need to stand up and fight for one another, not against each other. And that's, that's who I am. Maybe because I'm one of six kids and I was stuck in the middle. I had to make sure everyone got along all the time. <laughs> if you look at my experience, uh, while this is my first run for office, uh, I bring 30 years of experience um, of public service uh, in finance, administration, and a record of concrete accomplishments. You know, I led a bipartisan effort to design Ohio's Medicaid agency. 
I helped create balanced budgets worth billions of dollars um, while directing scarce resources to critical programs like Medicaid and food stamps. You know, as a community college president and treasurer, I worked hard along other, uh, alongside other leaders uh, to keep higher education affordable and responsive. And I understand from all that how to work within constitutional and other legal limits, appreciate diverse constituent concerns, and advance a, a pragmatic agenda One that achieves results. I want voters to know that I'm here to serve them, that I'm an advocate fighter. I'm blatantly transparent. I believe in civility and I believe in pulling people together, connecting people with politics. But most importantly, I care about our children and I care about our seniors and those who have been marginalized. And as I said, when I first decided and was asked to go to Congress, it was important for me to be there to fight for health care. We didn't know we were gonna be in a pandemic with three pandemics, the COVID-19, I continue to work to tell us to please mask up, please social distance because being safe is the number one thing. And I'm fighting for economic recovery because we know women, African-Americans and other minorities are treated uh, disproportionately affected uh, differently. And, and lastly, education. So when you think about healthcare, our economy, education and social justice. So I, I move with the time and now is the time for us to stand together and stand up for all the people because we know too many of us have had a knee on our neck, whether it's in social justice, whether it's in education or healthcare, this is our time to come together for not only the third congressional district, but for the nation. Coming up after the break, more from the men and women who may be representing you at the State House for the next two years. Welcome back to the Spectrum. With two days before the election, we're giving the candidates one final say before ballots are due. Our team here at Spectrum has pinpointed several key races at the State House, seats that have recently flipped parties that could be vulnerable again in 2020. What's the one thing you want people in your district to know about you? I think the one thing um, I want people to know about me is that I care deeply for Ohio. Um, I have a lot of hope that um, throughout this pandemic, um, we are going to see Ohio's best days ahead. And I think there's work to do, but I think there are um, systems and things in place that are gonna to continue to really strengthen Ohio's families and Ohio's uh, future. You know, I am a person that has had to fight really hard, both for my own family and for other people's families. It's something, you know, that I, I enjoy doing. I've developed a lot of grit over the years working on legislation that is difficult to pass, but necessary for Ohio families. And so I want to continue that work and expand that work uh, to be a fighter for every Ohio family. I work for them. Everything that I'm doing in terms of service is to bring the knowledge and experience that I've gained in medicine and in helping care for people um, to the broader issues that keep people healthy and well. And the work that I do is on their behalf and I'm always open um, to hear from them and continue to fight for them. I really am fighting for our comeback in this state. I believe Ohioans are resilient. I know that we're going through very difficult times, but I will never be too busy to care about them. I have the public policy background and also the private sector background. It's not because I'm an attorney, but because I care and I am going to treat this as a full-time position. That is what this district needs. Somebody who has their eye on the ball, who's focused on kids, the economy, and bringing jobs back to our district and Ohioans. What's the one thing you want voters in your district to know about you? I think first and foremost uh, that I am working hard for the people that I serve. And I think every single day about my neighbors and my constituents um, and my decisions that I am making at the state house. And I want to continue to do that and to be that voice for them. Well, I think that um, one of the things that they have to know is that I grew up in Ohio. Um, I grew up in Eastern Ohio in Appalachia. We didn't have much growing up. I grew up in one of the poorest counties in the state in Belmont County. 
I worked very hard for everything that I have. Uh, I was the first to go to college in my family. I work, I've worked nonstop, uh, even through college, since I was 13 years old. Um, in my career, I'm an architect and I've got a small construction company. And for years, for decades, I get up and I'm at work at 6 a.m. in the morning with my boots on and my hard hats working alongside everybody else and working late at night, as you know. <laughs> You've, and, uh, um, you know, and, and, and I think that that's an important thing to know because I, ha I think I feel that I have a really good handle on what people need um, in terms of people that are working and trying to get ahead and trying to secure a future for their family because I've been there. Well, I think the fact that I've made myself very much available to residents in the district is something people should know. I'm, I'm here. I work for you. I've been participating in town halls. Uh, some of them I'm hosting myself. I had a big one in Westerville a couple of weeks ago with uh, 12 different speakers on board just to share what was going on in Westerville and trying to do the same in the other areas of my district. Um, but I've made myself very available, uh, respond to emails and phone calls, and um, uh, am here to help. So I think that's what I want people to know. Plus, I've got uh, two years of experience underneath my belt, so I'm much, <laughs> much more, you know, ready to, to really uh, jump back into the, uh, to the fray in, in January and continue working hard to uh, bring their issues forward and, and uh, help them with policy that will um, make their lives better. One of the things that I've heard somebody say is that, you know, they don't like voting for politicians because they never know anything about them or who they are. I'm about as, I try to live about as transparent as you can get. I put everything out there, you know, for the last five or seven years, I've put things out on Facebook, which is open for anybody to read. I, you know, there's 5,000 people following that. Uh, very little of it gets negative. People tend to be very positive. You know, I've got a, uh, about 800 people on the campaign web, web, website already following things. Um, if you want to know about me or who I am or what I stand for, it's out there. I'm putting it out on Ballotpedia, on uh, Demcast, uh, on, the, on my Facebook page. I want folks to vote for me because they're comfortable knowing who I am. And some of those races you heard from only one of the candidates. We did reach out to both major party candidates and requested interviews in every one of those races. So if you didn't hear someone today, it's because we never heard from them. And you can see the full interview for all of those candidates at NBC4I.com right now. And coming up, our All-Star Roundtable previews the big day from control of the Senate and the Ohio Supreme Court to the all-important race for the White House. We break it all down next. In our roundtable this week, we have Republican strategist Bob Clegg back with us, Democrat Sandy Tyson. We are two days away from a presidential election, but guys, I don't think we're two days away from knowing who the winner is, are we? <laughs> no. So what are your predictions for what it's going to be like on election day? Well, uh, well I think... <laughs> Oh, which one? Go ahead, Bob. You can start. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, I think there's going to be on election day not as many people voting, but it's going to be a lot of Republicans voting because a lot of Republicans across the country have decided they're going to wait and actually vote on election day. So I think we're going to get a really two different set of returns. You're going to get one set of returns for election day voting that's going to look really, really, really Republican, and then you're going to have you know those early voters that's going to tend to be more Democrat. But a lot of those voters, Sandy, have gone and voted in person, like we've seen here in Franklin County. So that will count, right, on the day. It will count on the day. Um, I waited in line. It snaked all the way around the building. It only took about an hour. But I think we are going to know the result on Election Day, and I think Donald Trump's worst nightmare is going to come true. He's going to become <laughs> the one thing he most fears, and that's a loser. And that's because the voters have seen his incompetence, they've seen his record, and all the trend lines are not moving in the direction of Trump. Viruses are up, deaths are up, and I think Donald Trump will be defeated pretty handily. And it's going to be interesting, is it not, uh, and again, I'll start with you on this question, Bob, to see if those Senate races turn. I'm thinking of Mitch McConnell, Lindsey Graham, Susan Collins, Republicans that are kind of in a position that they haven't been in for a while, and that's uh, facing a viable challenger. Yeah, I think what's going to happen, though, and is in a lot of those states, like like in uh, South Carolina and Kentucky, 
that you just mentioned, that the president's going to do so well in those states that he will, you know, the Senate candidates will go along with it right there. I mean, the, the whole, you know, of course, I disagree with Sandy. I think the president's going to win again. I think he's going to win not only Ohio handily, uh, and you can tell that from the early vote in Ohio right now, but also, you know, he's going to win Pennsylvania and Michigan. Wisconsin, I'm not so sure. What, what are you thinking about Ohio, Sandy? Uh, there's a new poll that just came out that showed Joe Biden up by five. This is at the same time we've seen coronavirus deaths and infections reach all-time highs. I think this is going to kill him. People would like to actually live, and I think they're tired of the racism. They're tired of the chaos. They're tired of the lies. Well, I tell you, the, pr the problem the Democrats have with early vote here in Ohio, you only have to look at Cleveland which is why they sent Senator Harris there last weekend. Uh, the city of Cleveland takes up, uh, makes up 28% of the registered voters in Cuyahoga, but there are only 19% of the early voters that have cast ballots. You can't have that kind of, of non-enthusiasm with the city of Cleveland and carry the state of Ohio. And the Democrats are seeing that everywhere. They're seeing it down in Miami-Dade County in Florida. There's just no enthusiasm for Joe Biden. There, you know, is Sandy, there, there are people who are saying that people are voting more against Trump than for Biden. Does Biden have that kind of a of an enthusiasm passion gap? I don't think so. I think we saw that at the beginning, particularly with young people. And that's really started to change in the last six weeks. I want to ask you, too, about the uh, Supreme Court race here in the state of Ohio. A lot of outside money, and I'll start with you on this one, Sandy, a lot of outside money in that race. Why are people around the country paying attention to a Supreme Court race here in the state of Ohio? Well, because whoever wins control of the Supreme Court, the Democrats or Republicans, have say over the next round of legislative and congressional district maps. And that's really important because we are such a badly gerrymandered state. And the two incumbent Republican women are terrified because they voted in favor of a child rapist and they cut the damages for a child rape survivor. And when you do something like that, what do you do? You call in Carl Rove, Mr. Dirty Tricks, and you have him come in and you try to smear the Democrats. Jennifer Bruner's running. She is very well regarded in Ohio. She won the Kennedy Family's Profile and Courage Award for restoring integrity to our elections. And so the incumbent Republican women, they don't want to go after Jennifer, so they brought in Carl to do it for them. Well, let me ask you to and respond to that, Bob. Yeah, and they brought in with George Soros money, which you people don't seem to think is a problem. George Soros is, has decided he wants to go into these state Supreme Court races. He wants to get involved in attorney general races because they you know, realize that they can't get things done through the ballot box, so they're going to try to do it through either prosecution and through the courts. And that's when you can't win elections, that's what you have to end up doing. And, and that's what they're trying to do here in Ohio. People aren't going to fall for it. Uh, I think that they'll understand that their Democrats are trying to buy this thing, and they can't buy it. You know, before I let you go, we are almost out of time, but we are two days away from what some people are saying is, you know, we say, seem to say it all the time, but the election of our lifetime. I want each of you briefly to give me your one to 10 chance that your candidate will prevail for the White House on Tuesday. Bob? Well, he's going to win. He'll, electoral votes will be somewhere between 280 and 320. Uh, and uh, I don't see him losing any of the states he won the last time, except for maybe... Wisconsin. That's the only okay. One. And Sandy, I think Biden will win hands down. Donald Trump can't win without Florida, and he's getting beat according to the recent polls in Florida right now. All right. Thank you both. We will see who's right one week from now or a couple of days from now. Maybe we'll be back right after this. The political landscape could swing far to the left or to the right when we see you back here next Sunday on The Spectrum. We'll recap what's likely to be an election night like none other and whatever repercussions follow in the days afterwards. Thank you for joining us today and remember to vote.